I wish there was something I could learn on Wednesday and, and do <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> but uh, obviously, I'm not that talented. Uh, but uh, we thank the Lord for everybody being here today. This is the July 4th weekend. We're going to be talking about Christian citizenship. John Maxwell tells in, in one of his books about the Great Wall of China. What is the only thing that man has made that you can see from space? The Great Wall of China. I kind of gave it to up, didn't I, <laughs> right at the beginning? Uh, the Great Wall of China can actually be seen from space. It is a tremendous un undertaking. They made it so tall that no army could get over it in its day. They made it so thick that no army can tunnel through it. Uh, they made it impregnable. Uh, so the first hundred years of the existence of the Great Wall of Ch uh, China, they were only invaded three times. You see, no army went over the wall, and no army went through the wall. It was too high and it was too thick. But the armies went through the gates. Because while China had been diligent to provide a, the protection of a physical wall, they had not taught their children integrity and patriotism. And the gatekeepers were bribed to open up the gates to the invading armies. The wall didn't work out that well because of the moral collapse of the people inside of the wall. Folks, I, I, I know in America there are many opportunities uh, for us to try to keep evil out. But what we need to really focus on is to get God in, right? And what we really need to focus on is trying to help America change from the inside out. Second Chronicles 7.14, of course, says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. Uh, we'll make them whole. And, and God is, has promised to us that he can make a difference in our life. I want to talk to you about Christian citizenship today. Uh, we're going through a series called Coping with Life, and sometimes I, I think we don't give citizenship a high enough place in our theory of how to get through life well. I think we need to be good citizens. Amen? And I think our primary allegiance, first of all, has to be considered. It is our citizenship in heaven. Right? our citizenship in heaven. And uh, we are called in, in uh, J.L. Packer, J.I. Packer said, the more profound, that disappeared really quick. <laughs> the more profoundly one is concerned about heaven, the more deeply one cares about God's will being done on earth. We need to make sure that as Christians, our first allegiance is to our heavenly kingdom and the heavenly throne. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5.20, uh, Paul says this, Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you, on behalf of Christ, to be reconciled to God. Our purpose as Christians are to be citizens of heaven, first and foremost. Amen? I'm going to ask you to do something a little strange. I'm going to ask you to please stand. We're going to turn and face... The flag, this is our Christian flag, symbolizing our allegiance to our heavenly kingdom, our allegiance to our heavenly God. You may not know uh, the pledge to the Christian flag, but I'll say it and you follow along with me the best you can. And I'm going to test you in, after that. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. Okay, you got it, right? Here we go. This is a test part. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. Our first allegiance is to heaven. You may be seated. I'll have you stand in just a minute again. <laughs> we are called as ambassadors. You understand what an ambassador does, right? An ambassador from our country represents our country to another country. If we have an ambassador to Egypt, that 
ambassador is to represent the president, the Congress, the will of the people of the United States of America, right? That's what that ambassador is charged with. It's not his will that he represents, it's their will. And when we're citizens of heaven, we're called as ambassadors to the earth, we represent a heavenly kingdom, amen? And a, a heavenly God. And it's not our will that matters, it's really his will that matters, amen? And we represent the word of God, we represent the son of God, we represent the kingdom of God, on earth. We are called to be his ambassadors. It goes on to say there that we are called to represent the king. Uh, we, are, we are making an appeal. We beg on behalf of Christ. He is the king. Amen? On behalf of Christ. We represent the king. We represent Jesus Christ, Lord, Savior. One reigning in power, sitting at the right hand of God. He's accomplished his purpose here on earth, and now he is in power and majesty and glory. Amen? Amen. And we represent that king to this earth. Uh, we speak to the people. He says uh, there in that passage that, that we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled. We make an appeal. The appeal is made through us. I don't know why God did that. It seemed like to me a Madison Avenue uh, advertising firm might have been more appropriate. No, that's not how the gospel is spread, is it? The gospel is spread from one Christian to one person who has the opportunity to believe, then to another person who has. We have a part of that process. We are his ambassadors. We make the appeal. We even beg on behalf of Christ that they be reconciled to God. How passionate are we about our concern for the souls of men? How passionate are we that our children grow up to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior like we talked about a minute ago? How passionate are we? We represent the King. We represent the Kingdom. We represent the Son of God because that's the only way that reconciliation and peace can be made with God. Right? It's through Jesus Christ. We represent peace and reconciliation made available through the death, burial, resurrection, and ultimate kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We represent that. You see how important it is that we are citizens of heaven while we're here on this earth. You see how important it is that we realize that we are ambassadors for Christ while we are here on this earth. And we celebrate July 4th, of course. We celebrate the freedom that we have in America. But I can't start there because you can't be free unless you're free first in Christ. Now you can be free in America from many tyrannies and tyrants in our world and I praise God for our nation but I have to start with we are citizens of a heavenly kingdom while we're here on this earth representing that kingdom before the people here on this earth. We are blessed to be Americans however and so I want to share with you that we are ambassadors to earth. And I want to talk to you about the purposes of government. Uh, if you have your Bibles and you've opened them, I'm sure, and you turn to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We're going to be reading there. And if you would stand in honor of God's word and don't sit after we're done because we're going to say another pledge. Okay? Chapter 13, verse 1. Let every person be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are established by God. Therefore, he who resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who are opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. If you want to have no fear of authority, do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For as a minister of God to you for good, but if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger, who brings wrath on, upon the one who practices evil. Wherefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all that is due them. Tax to whom tax is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. And honor. To whom honor. 
Father, we thank this, you for this word. We thank you for our country. And we thank you, Lord, you can give to us the strength to live as citizens of heaven while we're here on this earth. And Lord, I pray that we would be the best American citizens that we can be because we are the best heavenly citizens. Uh, Lord, give to us uh, that, that desire to follow you, that subjection to you, and then the ability, Lord, also to obey our own laws and customs here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Don't sit. Okay, here we go. Attention. <laughs> Let's say our pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the kingdom for which is one nation under God, indivisible, with duty and justice for all. I was confusing the two. You may be seated. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> We are ambassadors to this earth. As ambassadors to this earth, we need to understand the purpose of government. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, writer of the original Declaration of Independence, said this, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have formed their, removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are a gift of God? Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. Thomas Jefferson wrote that in the beginning of our country. How much more true is it today? I believe our government was established on Christian principles and by Christian people who believed in the law and order that God established. God gave us, according to Romans chapter 13, God gave us government because he wanted there to be law and order. He wanted it to be an orderly society. He wanted us to be able to be secure. He wanted us to be able to have laws that would protect our home and our liberty and our health. He wanted us to be able to, to be a people uh, that were able to live life in freedom and know the freedom ultimately that was offered to us by him. He wanted to give us a society that would execute justice that would stand for what's right, that would stand against what's wrong. Uh, and, and that's what this passage says. It, it said uh, it's not a cause for fear for good behavior, but for evil. Uh, there's, if, do you have, want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good. That makes good sense, doesn't it? <laughs> if you don't want to fear, I remember when I was younger, uh, my, I was pretty famous among my friends for being able to uh, spot the cops, the fuzz, the, <laughs> the guys in, they were white cars back then with, with multicolored lights, uh, and I could spot them a long ways off. And I was riding with my dad one day, and with my friends, they always wanted me to spot them, of course. But with my dad, I was traveling with him, going on a route all day long, so I tell him, hey, daddy, there's a cop up there. He said, okay, and he keep on going. Then later on in the day, I'd say, Dad, watch out. There's a cop just around that corner right up there. I said, okay. He'd, he'd keep going. About the third or fourth time I, I did that, he finally said, Albert, do not tell me where the policemen are. He said, if you're not doing wrong, you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> it's like a light turned on <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> It's not that I didn't do anything wrong after that, but at least I knew I didn't have to be afraid of the policeman if I was doing what was right. God ordained government so that we could have a society that was right, was good, where good things could happen and where bad things were prevented because of penalties. God ordained government to establish order, uh, to provide to, for the common good. 